actors, but just actors and making movies in general. And over here we have the photo shoot. So for this event it's just two, three boxes, it's not really hard to find. So these are the three photo ops. Also, I, you weren't here last time, yes. but they had a hundred extras, so that meant many booths. I it was insane. It was so insane, I couldn't film. Well, I know what happens. Yeah. It's a line of insane. Yeah. Like in the line for the photo with them. Like the yeah. The, the line was like... Yeah. Uh, and then we call it the Schlange in Germany. The yeah. Schlange. Yeah. Beware of the Schlange. <laughs> <laughs>
then a couple of crates yesterday in about four and a half minutes. So, yeah, so I'm going to enjoy myself. Yeah, and um, it's, it's not just great to, to have you here, but, but back in, in that group, I know you, of course, you started a lot with Josh in, in the first uh, uh, Harry Potter films. Uh, what's it like for you guys to, to reunite after so many years again? It's, it was emotional. Yeah, um, really. And, and I know we'll all see each other again later on, but um, I haven't seen Josh specifically, uh, who plays Goyle, my right hand man. I have not, I have not seen him for, uh, I want to say nearly 10 years. And even talking about it, it makes me a bit of a bit of we spent so much time together growing up uh, on the sets, um, so to not have seen him for so long it was it was uh, it was a wonderful reunion, and I uh, I look forward to hanging out with him more uh, over the weekend. Well, I think I'm just really quickly going to check, but I just got a sign that that they might have just arrived. Ula, are you back there? Are they here? All right, well, should we invite him on stage? Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. Let's give it up for Chris Rankin and the Bones! Hello again. So yeah, I, I was just talking to Tom about uh, about you guys reuniting, and it's great to have you all individually as guests. But it must also be for you, like reuniting with, with all the cast members. It's been a few years since, of course, the last film uh, wrapped. What's it like for you guys to to revisit the show through these comic cons and to have all of these people, you know, dressed up as characters that you played? Um, what's that like for you, Ivana, uh, to revisit this universe? Um. Josh and Dan and Emma and Rupert, 
they were all like 10, 11, 12 years old when we started filming, and I turned 70. But we were all, in some ways, and sort of, we were learning the same things at the same time. So I kind of, you forget sometimes that we are all, especially the older we get as well, like, it's, it's a bit harder, you know, you kind of, you forget that I was that much older because we were all learning, we were all in the same place, doing the same thing at the same time. And it was a first, first time experience for so many of us that I think it kind of evens everything out quite a lot. Um, it's, it's a crazy yeah. world to enter in, and you, you experience that together, of course, all of you. Yeah. Which movie did you guys like the most? Which movie did we like the most? Like, from 1 till 7, part 1 and 2? Alright, let's see, which which was your favorite to shoot or to watch? Um, Very hard to answer. I'll let the uh, prefect take Thanks, take the first answer. Um, I think my favorite film to watch is Half... No, not Half... Uh, yeah, Half Blood Prince, uh, the sixth film. <laughs> right? Because I'm not in it. <laughs> That's why I didn't enjoy that. I can, <laughs> I can sit and I can relax and just enjoy it. But it's, yeah, I think that's my favorite. I think my favorite one to film was Order of the Phoenix, the fifth film. Because I, Percy had stopped being a, a Hogwarts student and it started to be a grown-up and I, yeah, yeah, so I got to act with the grown-ups and that was, that was a different experience for me, so that would, yeah, yeah, that's a good question, anybody? Okay. Um, I would say I enjoyed Half of Prince because when I first joined the films it was like, you know, they had already done this for years, they were my icons as a fan, I felt very uncomfortable, I felt very much like, you know, the imposter syndrome why I'm here. I think my number six, I kind of was like, oh, get over yourself. You know, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Just enjoy it and, and accept where you are. And um, it was really fun. And also, that was the, it wasn't the sense of doom that it's ending that the seventh one was. Like when we were doing the seventh one, every interview was like, how do you feel that it's ending? It was just yeah. like, oh. Um, so I enjoyed that one. But I actually really enjoyed watching uh, Deathly Hallows part one the most because I thought it was really experimental. I loved the whole thing of these three teenagers being sort of lost in the forest, having to save the world and having no clue how to do that. I, I thought that feeling of they really didn't know if they were going to manage it was very prominent. And uh, yeah, uh, I enjoyed that one. Hard to pick. Um... Josh and I were Slytherins on screen, but we were just as much Slytherins off screen <laughs> as well. So we always had lots of fun. I remember having lots of fun on the first couple, getting to know each other and sharing a lot of similar interests. Um, but I, um, I think it changes every every year, to be honest with you, which ones that I. Uh, remember more stories of, or enjoy watching more. But I think for some reason, Prisoner of Azkaban uh, took the biscuit this year. Chamber of Secrets was originally, because they got me back into reading. I, I li literally stopped reading for, for several years, uh, so I was very grateful for that, um, which obviously is a passion that has continued. But um, yeah, the, pris uh, um, the third floor, Prisoner of Azkaban, really, I think, took the the slightly uh, childish uh, nature of the first two films into a much, much darker um, space. So, um, yeah, obviously Alfonso, we have a lot to thank him for for that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to pick one, to be honest. Is that the same for you, Josh? Do you need to find it hard to pick, or do you have like one that stands out for you? Oh, no, yeah. My, my favorite book was Prisoner of Azkaban, and that's my favorite movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can apply for that, definitely. Cheer for that. Also, it's like because when Alfonso came on, everything that we were used to in terms of we like had to be immaculate, really. Like, there wasn't a hair out of place, top buttons always done up. You know, we had to look pretty much very perfect. Um, and then I think it, I think it was Alfonso's in, uh, decision or influence that, you know, they kind of just turned that on its head yeah. and they said, no, we want the kids looking more 
believable, like like real actual school kids, you know. So we were allowed to undo our top buttons and we could roll up our sleeves and some had jumpers, some didn't, some had clothes, some didn't. And I really like that, you know, I, I, I appreciate realism. I mean, as real as, you know, yeah, the story cool. about magic and dragons <laughs> is. But, uh, my, my, my favourite movie to make was Bull, um, Chamber of Secrets because of, you know, Polyjuice Potion. Yeah, exactly. Because I've gone from like, basically a, a glorified extra on the first movie and then all of a sudden I'm having a, I'm having a close up and it's just me and set. You know, and got Chris Columbus, legend, directing me and only me. And I was just like, that was a real moment for me. And I, was, I was looking into the mirror as, as Harry changes into me. And I was like, well, yeah, this is, this is all about me. Amazing. For, for a little while. Fantastic. Thanks so You're one of my favourite scenes of the entire <laughs> day. Uh, especially the ad lib line that I'm pretty sure it was. It was us three, yeah. 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 Didn't, didn't know you could read. <laughs> it was always uh, That's one of my favourite lines in the whole It's great to have you here today. And uh, guys, have a lot of fun. Give it up for Larry Pottercast! Yeah. Peoples. Oh, yeah, so they're so waiting for the so session. They're uh, ready with the Harry Potter panel. So now we're gonna switch over to Classic Beast. Next one is Fantastic Beast. Beasts and then, and then two and three went like really dark, you know. It, it 
I don't think that was planned before and that it would take that or turn, right? Did you know when you started the first film um, that, that that was going to be the culmination of going to that war, leading into that war? Well, kind of, yeah, beforehand, like, we signed on because, right, we didn't know what the arc was when it was just Fantastic Beasts, the, the pamphlet, you know, where it was just like a, a guide to the beast, you know. But when we were handed that first script, we knew of the iconic battle between uh, Grindelwald and Dumbledore, we knew that. And that we knew that um, this was, the, the timeline seemed perfect for it to line up with it. And then as the movies progressed, we realized, yeah, this is, this is gonna culminate in that big confrontation, yeah. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Herr Nico
No plan B is a strain, it's terrifying, but sometimes it just makes you go where you need to go. Uh, I could listen to you all day, but unfortunately I'd like we're running 10 minutes late already. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have to say goodbye to you after. Get up, we'll take a selfie with the cast and uh, post it on our social channels so you can tag yourself and us. Three, two, one, go! Going to the labyrinth of Compose. Yes. Let's go.
salute you. It's such a pleasure to have all of you here, and we're gonna start soon. All right, DJ, hit it up.
have reached the end of the video. We're back home. And there was this snowstorm. So I put it right here in front of Marjolein, how that looked like. <laughs> so first we wanted to make like an ending in the in the car. But Natasha was like, no, I want to concentrate. And it was a madhouse outside, so. Well, it was like so hard snowing, you couldn't see anything you know, in the, front of you. Yeah, the signs even were covered with snow. It was the only snow, it was the only snow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, we're going to look uh, at what we bought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First thing. Yeah. What do you want to say? <laughs> what did you buy? I bought... Normally you start with me, so now... Oh, we'll yeah, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh we're going to start with me. Yeah. I bought... Yeah. This is um, Freddy's Nightmares, the TV show. And it was, uh, on, I think, on VHS and then aired in America. And, uh, yeah, they put it on, the, on this disc. I've already seen it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just like the official airing, because you could see the television program and everything with it. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about it because I was searching for it everywhere, so there it is. What did you bought? Well, I bought one of the many shops and I bought <laughs> this one. Ooh, Killer Clowns! Yeah. Ooh. I already owned a Killer Clown Blu-ray, but this is like a special edition because it's like a little uh, a book. A little Every booklet, yeah. Yeah. A booklet, yeah. Although it's German. Yeah, that's what. But they speak English in the movie. Yeah, they speak English. And oh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think if you really want to know what... I think you'll know a little bit of German. And then you can also just take Google. And we also know the movie, so that it's like easy. That's true. Yeah. The last thing... also the... Well, the actor cancelled. Yeah, you cancelled. That's we got uh, still the cop. With yeah. Him. And Taylor Lauter. Yeah, that yeah. was last year. And yeah. then he was supposed to come... Well, not last year, like the, the last edition. Mm, yeah. He had the cup as well, he cancelled, so the cup was still made for uh, Taylor. Yeah. And now they made the cup again, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was cancelled again. So, unfortunately, well, hopefully you will see him in May. And otherwise, uh, we will see you soon, Peter Faccinelli. Can you even I, pronounce I, that? <laughs> Peter Faccinelli? Faccinelli. Faccinelli. He always <laughs> says that, so I always thought it was Faccinelli, but it's Faccinelli. It's like weird. <laughs> But uh, well, if you don't know how to pronounce that, oh, it's like Farsinelli. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was Farsinelli for years, even when I met him. And then he had this like this little vlog, and I was like, wait, what did you just say, Farsinelli? Okay, okay, okay. So um, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna close the video right now. Yeah. If you like the video, give a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. Consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye. bye.